So this video will be about the family Apaceae. This is a really cool family. Um, it's commonly known as the parsley family. It has about 434 genera with over 3,700 species. And there are several or, uh, ornamental varieties, lots of food plants, and a few poisonous species as well. So if you can see up in the top, this family also has the historical name as umbelliferae. And umbelliferae refers to the inflorescence type uh, in this family. So members of the APACA often have compound umbels. So not only is it a good recognition character, it is also kind of uh, the historic name for this family, umbelliferae. Celery is a nice example of an edible member of this family in which uh, the part that we eat is actually the petiole of the leaf, believe it or not. Carrots are another good example, uh, and in this case, the edible portion is actually a swollen root. Dill is also a common culinary herb found in this family, as well as curly parsley here. Here is perhaps one of the most famous members of this family, the poison hemlock, or conium maculatum. And this, in fact, is the plant that was given to Socrates in order to poison him. Eryngium maritimum is a really gorgeous plant um, in the APAC. It is commonly known as sea holly and is found in the Mediterranean on the shores and uh, coastlines there. So getting into some of the family characters here, let's take a look at the habit. Generally, members of the APAC are biennial and perennial herbs, um, though they are sometimes woody and rarely trees. So in fact, uh, the members that occur in temperate regions are generally herbaceous, and in the tropics, they are more woody, so shrubs and trees. So in Colorado, you can generally think of the APACA as biennial or perennial herbs, and rarely would they be woody in this region. Um, and often they are aromatic, so think of you know, your parsley and your dill that we went over earlier. This here, Heteromorpha arborescens, we commonly call the parsley tree. And this is a good example of one of the woody members. And this guy here is native to South Africa. So you can see the woody habit here as well as some great compound umbels, which are typical of the family. So back to the carrot, this is just a classic example of a biennial life form. So in the first year, it sticks to vegetative growth in which this uh, root becomes swollen. And in the second year, it reaches reproductive maturity in which it flowers and produces fruit and seed and then after the second year of growth, it dies. Looking at the leaves and stems, the APAC generally have hollow internodes, so um, hollow stems in between the nodes. The stems are furrowed, meaning we see uh, longitudinal ridges, essentially. Leaves are usually alternate and usually compound um, or highly dissected, and we often see sheathing leaf bases. So this here is kind of your classic leaf shape in the APAC, this compound leaf here. And here you can see that classic sheathing leaf base common in the APAC. Well, as I said earlier, the inflorescence is generally a compound umbel, giving the historical family name umbelliferae. Um, and then this classic compound umbel can be seen in the picture here. The flowers are perfect, so we have both male and female reproductive structures. They're actinomorphic, usually yellow or white, and the ovary is inferior. So here's just another example of that compound umbel. You can also see these really large sheathing leaf bases below. Taking a quick look at the floral formula here, you can see that we have a five maris flower with a polysepalous calyx, polypetalous corolla, five stamens, and um, a gynecium with two 
sorry, syncarpus gynecium with two fused carpals. And you can see here uh, the line is above the G, so we have a inferior ovary in the gynecium. So many of the uh, genera in APAC have an interesting thing called the stylopodium that is associated with their fruits. So the stylopodium is this fleshy base that is caused by um, the fusion of the two styles. So you can see we have this, this fleshy fusion here and here and here, and that is caused by the fusion of the two styles. So here's another good example. This species is Berula erecta, and it has a stylopodium quite clearly. We see the two stigmas and styles, and at the base of the styles, they are fused in this kind of enlarged structure sitting upon the ovary. But not all members of the APAC have stylopodiums. This here is a species in the genus Lomatium, and uh, you can clearly see there is no stylopodium here. Um, we just have the ovary, and we don't see any kind of enlarged structure due to fusion of styles. Roots in the APAC are schizocarps, and these schizocarps are composed of two one seated mericarps, and each of these mericarps are suspended on a carpophore here. And uh, this carpophore is a structure that is composed of these the dry, wiry remnants of, of vascular strands, essentially. Now, each mericarp also has these ridges running along it, and in between the ridges, we have oil tubes. And the fruits in this family are extremely important, and in fact, uh, it's very difficult to key out many species. Um, unless you have the fruit. So speaking of how important the fruit is in the taxonomy of this group, um, sometimes the fruit has really distinct oil patterns. So this here is a member of the genus Heraclium, and um, they have very distinct oil patterns on their fruits. This here is the fruit of Cymopteris longipes, in which we have winged fruits, so uh, quite distinct from some other members of this group. And here we have Dacus carota, or the carrot. So this also has quite distinct fruits compared to the last two species we looked at. So let's just do a quick review of the recognition characters that we've gone over. So in this region, at least, we will expect to see herbaceous plants um, with compound leaves and the inflorescences. Uh, we expect to be compound umbels, usually with uh, white or yellow flowers. And for the leaves, we expect to see a sheathing leaf base. And a, um, oftentimes we will see a stylopodium on the fruit. So not always, but if we do see a stylopodium, that's quite indicative of the APAC. So for the next few slides, we'll just look at some cool members of the APAC that grow in this area. So this here is Lomatium orientale, and uh, the common name is salt and pepper, and this is an early spring bloomer. Aletus humulus is one of our rare plants in this family and is only found in two counties within the state of Colorado. It's usually found growing in cracks and rocks, as shown here. This here, Cymopteris alpinus, is a common high elevation member of this family. Orogenia linariafolia, commonly known as the Great Basin Indian potato, um, has this really large swollen taproot, uh, very much like the carrot, and this was a big source of food for Native Americans living in the Great Basin. So you have to be careful with this family because although there are a lot of edible members, there are also a lot of very poisonous members, such as uh, the western water hemlock, Secuta deglossii, which I have shown here, um, and also, you know, the poison hemlock, Conium maculatum, that we talked about earlier, 
which is actually the plant that was used uh, to kill Socrates. All right, so just as a last example for you guys, we're going to look at Heraclium maximum or cow parsnip. And this is one of the more common members of this group in Colorado, and it really loves wetland areas. So if you guys are ever on a hike and end up at a stream crossing or some kind of swampy uh, wetland area, you will oftentimes run into Heraclium maximum.